This week on the show, we bring you discussion with the Masters on the City Ministry, its impact since creation. If you look at it, what has changed is the clamor. In the record time that ministry was able to meet, wifey was able to put together stakeholders for all. Plus, a special segment, Tag Tech Impact, brought to you by SAP. SAP helps companies run like never before. Learn more by visiting sap.com.ng slash better. Join us. Hello, you are especially welcome to this edition of the program, AIT Infotech Network. And I am Bayeru Agabi. For details, you can log on to aitinfotechnetwork.com or better still, you can text the number on your screen. The fast pace of technological development is transforming our lives. In this new world of digital revolution, no nation, organization, or individual can develop without technology. In the march towards the future, we cannot allow ourselves to fall behind. Our economy depends on it. Our professional capability must be up to date. To bridge this divide, AIT brings to you Infotech Network, West Africa's first leading and award-winning ICT program on television. Cross the bridge. Join Nigeria's best ICT reporter of the year. And the winner is Mr. Agabi from Africa Independent Television of Nigeria. To extra issues and development in global ICT. For participation, Reach AIT Head Marketing Alagbado, Lagos, Bayeru Agabi at yahoo.com. AIT Infotech Network, the tool device. The Obama administration, according to Reuters, has lifted the United States Trade Panel's ban on the sales of some older iPhones and iPads such as the iPhone 4, iPhone 3GS, iPad 3G, and iPad 2.3G distributed by AT&T Incorporated. The previous ruling, which had favored Samsung Electronics Company Limited over Apple Incorporated in their long-running patent battle, resulted from the Apple devices infringing on the patent owned by the South Korean electronics giant. In the same development, U.S. Trade Representative Michael Froman vetoed the ban, saying the decision was in the interest of the U.S. economy and U.S. consumers at large. This is AIT Infotech Network and I am Bayero Agabi and thank you for being with us all this while. For participation, you can log on to our website tmconline.com.ng or you can text the number on your screen. How much of public engagement and the operators themselves do? this to the front so that Nigerians have a proper sense of understanding that the issue is not solely with more number portability that button does not necessarily address your issue. Your issue also resides with your representatives. I really like to know because I never knew uh, up to this point what the basic advantage of uh, number 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 portability has the quality of service really improved with MNP? And you told us that it has improved. If it has, can you tell us at what percentage that it has improved? Those were some of the concerns raised by stakeholders in the Nigerian Information and Communication Technology sector at the Second Quarter Industry Forum, organized recently in Lagos by ICT Publishers Alliance, with the team, MNP, the journey so far, realities, challenges, and potentials. What we have tried to do in this forum is to look into um, what challenges, what um, uh, challenges subscribers are facing for now, or even those who are involved in um, in uh, effecting the porting scheme. Uh, if there are initial challenges that can be 
uh, looked into and uh, removed out of the way so that the potting experience can be total, efficient and effective and benefit all, benefit all stakeholders. Early this year, the Nigerian Communication Commission launched the Mobile Number Portability Initiative as part of its efforts to deepen competition and force operators to provide better service to their customers. Represented at events by Odeyemi Ogo, the Executive Vice Chairman NCC Eugene Jua stressed that the Commission is committed to creating more awareness to guide Nigerians on the MNP processes. In anything in life, all right, if people are not aware of how to go about what they have to do, certainly there will be a lot of challenges, all right? And that is why the Nigeria Communications Commission has made sure that we've put in a lot of efforts at creating the required awareness for people to understand exactly what the mobile number portability is all about, how they can go about doing it. Because if you get that, once that is gotten very right, then a lot of the a lot of issues that would have cropped up actually addressed in a very proactive manner because of course enlightenment without gain saying gives you the power to be able to not do the wrong things on the success recorded so far in the mobile number portability initiative uche Owudiwe of interconnect clearing house maintain that subscribers now have the opportunity to migrate from one network to another well the success that we'll say is that people are actually porting people are actually using the process and that's one of our key um, indicators of whether we're doing a good job or not. Um, once the subscriber has the opportunity to change from one network to another, then we know that we're succeeding. And once we're able to do it in a timely manner and within the parameters that we've set, then we know that our process is working. Basically, uh, this, this site so far has been encouraging. We are seeing numbers increasing on a week-by-week -week basis, certainly. Now, from that perspective, yes, it's very it's encouraging what we're seeing. However, if the numerous challenges like poor power supply, multiple taxation, and a host of others are adequately addressed, the 119 million active subscribers in the country will enjoy better quality of service, and porting from one network to the other will now become a team of choice. Months have passed since the gruesome murder of Cynthia Osokogo a Nigerian model and daughter of a retired army general. But her death and similar issues played up here today at the Sheo Musaya Radua Center, Abuja, venue of this year's Nigeria Internet Governance Forum. I think there is just a child that died in the, in the UK just of recently. It was through the internet. And we have had our own share here. Our Cynthia that died here was killed here. What was it? It was through uh, social network chatted with some boys and she left her place and came to Lagos and was killed. So we have all those issues of the bad behavior on the net. So what do we do? How do we tackle that? We, we need to protect our children. There is the question for the children to know where to visit, the site to visit and what not to visit. Internet surveillance also elicited a heated debate here today. Participants differ on whether or not the government should be allowed to spy on people's emails. The government has access to information for security and law enforcement purposes, but the discourse doesn't seem to be focused more on who's going to supervise the government's um, surveillance practices. Not just having surveillance, but having um, the right to protect users from abuse by the government. We're in a delicate age. The cyber system, the cyber ecology, needs its police personnel. It needs, so security is an increasing issue uh, in the cyber ecology. But the issue is how do you do it in a way that is lawful, in a way that is not overly intrusive, in a way that does not undermine the growth of, of cyber inclusion. And, and I do think that is what we have got to address. And, and that is where the devil really is in the details of the proposals that the NCC has put forward. I think it's a good thing that that's been done. But there is also a second issue, which is, do you do this by secondary legislation or do you do it by primary legislation? If you look at the internet on its own, it's a cyberspace. It's a replica of the real life situation. And there is the need for us to have checks and balances. Today, you can't just move on the street freely if there are no police. So we need something like that to 
for someone to know that yes, somebody somewhere is looking at what he's doing is a measure through which we can safeguard the cyberspace. Hmm. From whatever angle you choose to look at it, truth is, the freedom we enjoy today on the cyberspace is gradually being eroded as governments across the world is becoming more interested in the things we do on the internet. I am Francisca Nana reporting for AIT Infotech Network. And now to our issue of the week. Stay with us. Hello, you're especially welcome to this segment of the program where we discuss issues that matters, issues that affect the ICT industry in Nigeria. Today, on the front burner is the city ministry, that is the communications technology ministry. The question we are asking here today is, what has changed since the city ministry was created? Um, to deal justice on this, uh, two great minds from the media. One of them is uh, the former president of the Joint Action Committee for ICT Awareness and Development, and that is the uh, person of Prince Oswago. You're welcome. You're welcome. He's also a frontline journalist, an ICT journalist. Um, I also have in the studio the, the one we call, uh, one who said the pace for people like us to follow. Um, is uh, Shino Badaru, the publisher of Technology Times, and again, the current president of the Joint Action Committee for ICT Awareness and Development. Gentlemen, you're welcome to the show. Thank you very Thank much. You much. It's all right. uh, I think we kick off this way. The city ministry was created over a year ago. Prince, let me start with you. Okay. Um, there were reasons for stakeholders and even the media clamory for a central coordinating point for ICT activities uh, in this country. Uh, we saw that, that gave rise to the birth of the city ministry. Today, what would you say has changed? Well, <laughs> I think it's a, it's, a, it's a big irony. I don't, know, I don't know how to say. I think if you look at it, what has changed is the clamor. There is no more clamor. I think that is what has changed. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything is still the way it used to be. You mm -hmm. said the only thing that has changed is the glamour. Uh, the glamour. To what extent do you disagree or agree with uh, what Prince has just said? I'll just simply acknowledge that uh, so much has changed radically and fundamentally. Uh, we first of all have to acknowledge the fact that within the record time, uh, the ministry released the new uh, inf information and communication technology policy and uh, within a record time that ministry was able to meet wifey was able to put together stakeholders for rock was able to get a cross uh, diversity of uh, input and opinion from across the stakeholder and was able to get it through uh, the villa to be endorsed uh, 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 and signed off by the president as a, a national ICT policy. And that happened in what a lot of people acknowledge as a record time. And uh, that for me is a fundamental change which basically cemented that foundation for so many other things that would we like want to industry. Yeah, like basically. Okay, like but, but you see the stakeholders on the basis of the clamor for the ICT, in, uh, for the city industry, uh, was that also there should be some physical changes that they can actually identify with. Um, beyond the policy uh, framework that is still in the works because it has not been fully you know, uh, put into um, a law, it, it has not been made a law. Yeah, would you, can you pinpoint those areas that you say the ministry has influenced some practical uh, uh, changes? Oh, great. Uh, quite obvious. Uh, let me first of all correct something. Mm -hmm. I don't speak for the ministry. I just speak like an industry analyst who's yes. seen things evolve. Okay, ever since the policy uh, uh, came to be, 
there's also been a whole world of other initiatives. Let's first of all acknowledge the fact that the ministry is largely not responsible for executing. The ministry is responsible for coming, shaping, and de defining policy vision, policy direction, and ensuring they are consistent and sustainable uh, 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 um, um, execution. One area where we must also acknowledge the, 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 the fact that the ministry has impacted is that there's, a, there's been this clamor for broadband, broadband that should follow after that famous uh, mobile telephony explosion that has given us over uh, 110 million active lines at the end of say last year. Now people are now saying broadband is the next layer of growth in the industry. Broadband that would foster, that would deliver the benefit of the internet, the digital dividend. And uh, broadband, uh, the ministry has also been able to come up with a broadband team. Okay. With the city ministry, we, he has enumerated um, two key areas where the ministry has been able to touch you know, uh, a an, an national growth, which is the broadband and the policy framework giving us a roadmap on how to go as a nation. Um, beyond this, uh, what are those uh, areas you think the industry clamored for uh, that is yet to be met? I, 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 I hate it when ICT issues are being mixed up with politics. It makes mess of the whole mm -hmm. thing. I so much like the, 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 the young woman who is uh, the minister, quite intelligent, quite fantastic. In fact, her roadmap, the things she faced mm -hmm. that she that needs to be done, mm -hmm. you know, quite honestly, they are the things that can take out, take us out of the uh, doldrum. But are they taking us out of the doldrum? The last time we we went we were in Dubai for the ITU uh, summit in Dubai, I think the Emirates we were told that um, the Dubai Hana has. 90%, you know, and 100% broadband connectivity. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is, that is huge, you know, for innovation. That is huge for employment generation. Yeah. That is huge for knowledge explosion. And that is also good for entrepreneurship. Okay. Coming back home, uh, these are some of the things I think, I'm thinking for the industry now. Uh, that we all envisage that will come to be within a very short time. Take uh, the, the, the budget for the year. If we say that we have a broadband policy, how much has been budgeted Fine. for it from the Executive Council? Do we have that? If you have to take a look at what the ministry has done and the impact of the ministry in, in terms of innovators, entrepreneurs, the young men and women in Otiba, you know, the co-creation hub of this world and all that, you know, how would you score that? First of all, Omobola Johnson is the first minister living there to alive to have visited Computer Village. Computer Village today is acknowledged as the African hub for technology, retail and wholesale product sales and all of these things. Now that woman took herself out of her cozy office on a hot business day and mm. went there, took a, I mean, took a street tour, mm, engaged with players in that market, was able to get the first hand information. information, was able to get the first hand view of innovation underway in that key strategic market in Africa. And the impact of those changes may not be overnight, but they will begin to basically uh, 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 unfold. And what else are we talking about? That ministry today has taken the level of, uh, has taken government's policy of uh, by Nigeria one step further. That ministry has uh, adopted five Nigerian original equipment makers in computer assembly, okay, um, Zynox, mm. Omatech, Vida, 
better computers that was the fifth one if I can uh, 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 um, system. brand system now those guys are now going to under a public private partnership begin to put computers on the desktop of students across Nigeria now do you want to imagine the change on the way with every Nigerian student being able to acquire a computer on their own the innovation in Silicon Valley was not that the American government said that we're just going to pump innovation <laughs> into your head. We're, well, going, we're going to give you tools <laughs> that would enable you innovate. You know, and that's uh, what has happened. You know, as you're saying this, something just hit And me. it's just going that to we explode. Had for all Nigeria, for all Nigeria initiative. initiative. We had Kani. Yes, we had. Was that different from this? If this was di this is this the, the, the model mm. that has been adopted mm. Is different. Kani was about giving out contract, gave out money to people or provide computers to government employees and all this. No, this time around, mm. this is now bankrolled by 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 banks, mm. which government is not putting his money into it. Government is just providing guarantees no, to those people even and with saying Kani, that the banks were giving guarantee. The, it was they a were. government. It was likely a government funded project. In this case, it's not. Banks. Through the banks, the banks gives the guarantee. No, government provided money. This time around, government, government is not providing money. Okay. Government is just providing the guarantee that look, I have endorsed uh, um, uh, Zynox mm. to be part of this initiative. If you meet the uh, parameters mm. stipulated by the bank, mm. your the student mm. or the guardian of the ward can then sign up, just like you, the popular consumer loans. Yeah that we have in which people used to buy cars electronics and, and yeah. that's exactly what's going to happen so with those tools mm. in the hands of nigerian mm. students and with broadband wi-fi all over the, the the campus network the ministry has done very well the minister has done well uh going to bring out both of you uh, uh what do you think the ministry is not doing right now that mm. you ought to be doing okay the i i can say from top of my head that mm. the the quiet changes on the way in the ministry are not being communicated to be to his various stakeholders, particularly the Nigerian public. There's so much happening. For instance, look at it. Uh, just uh, over uh, in December, the federal government, through the coordination of the Ministry of Communication Technology, inaugurated the um, analog to digital mm. uh, um, um, uh, oh, broadcast uh, switchover. Yes with a roadmap plan to say that by January 2015, this 14-man team would drive this change required to uh, uh, arrive at this destination. Yes. Now, there's going to be a consequence of that that is not so apparent to a lot of Nigerians. One is that a lot of frequencies held by broadcast stations yes. will now be freed up. Yes. And that's what's called this popular digital dividend. Mm. When they're freed up, where do they go to? They go to telecoms company. Yes. First of all, the first thing they do is that they earn another round of millions of dollars mm. in license fees to the federal government. Yes. One area that the ministry is weak right now is in media and publicity. Yes, largely so. Okay. In communicating yes. whatever so is doing. What do you to think the ministry is not doing right now? Key. Well, that um, today, if we look or at it ought to be doing right if now. If we look at all these issues. Mm. That is why we say nothing much has been done. Mm. If I don't know in the media, mm. how would the man who depends on me to know, mm. how would he know? When I said that I hate it, when ICT issues are mixed up with policy, I, I never referred mm. to you. I mean that that has been mm. the problem with moving ICT forward here. We mix a lot of ICT issues with politics. Mm. Most of the things he has done has been on political ground alone. That's why you don't know. That's why I don't know. What I thought is that when this woman came in, she was going to leave, give politics 40% mm. and give consultation mm. and private partnership 60%. Mm. Look at the outcomes of this world, look at the justices of this world, look at the outcomes of this world, look at the response of this world, look at all of them. Where are your problems? Naipost on the, on the hotline now. When was the last time you used Naipost services? <laughs> I, I think that was when I was in the primary school. <laughs> and that was in the, that was in the 70s. What about you? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I think uh, last time I used Nipos was when I received my jam letter. <laughs> <laughs> you are, I'm you okay. Thank you very much for Thank coming so much. For, yeah. on Thank the show. Very Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is the show for the week. If you have any comment or suggestions for us, please send them to bayero at aitinfotechnetwork.com or you can text the number on your screen. Until next week, bye-bye for now.